Welcome to Mark Gibson's Human Risk Channel. Accountant with the Simation CPA, MBA, CMA, ACPA, ASA, Astralda. Enjoy learning! Today we'll discuss about the analysis of financial statements. So, the importance of uh, statement analysis is basically to assist the statement users in predicting the future, you know? So, imagine class, no? Um, we're dealing with financial statements. Ano ba yung mga financial statements natin? Uh, we have the balance sheet, uh, income statement, statement of changes in equity. But in, in this case, we'll focus more on, and we have the cash flow also in the notes to your uh, uh, FS, no? But like I said, in this case, we'll focus on balance sheet and income statement. No? And then imagine, of course, you have diba, basically your balance sheet and income statement there from the past. You know? So results of the past uh, transactions. No? Like uh, we'll, we'll have 2020 income statement and then 2019 income, sta income statement or FS or, or balance sheet. No? And then what we're actually doing as accountants or finance uh, finance manager is uh, we analyze those results, we analyze those numbers in order for us to predict or forecast what will be um, the result or the numbers that we'd like to achieve in the coming periods. No? So uh, it's an aid for us accountants to do our budget or to do operational budget, static budget, and even st uh, strategic plan. No? So there are three types or three techniques uh, commonly used to make comparisons to detect trends. So number one, we have peso and percentage changes in financial statement items, common size statements and ratios. No? So like I said, we'll be covering all these three today. No? So. Uh, this will be a lengthy discussion, but uh, I hope towards the end of the discussion you'll appreciate the whole concept, no? Because um, the approach that we we'll, that uh, we're practicing in in my class is um, after we finish discussing the the theoretical part, we proceed with the discussion problems, no? So to illustrate all this uh, theory that we're talking about, no? So I'm sure. Uh, you're you're most excited to do the discussion problems no, than just listening to all what I'm saying. No? So, but please bear with me. No? So statements in comparative and common size form. Two basic approaches are often used to compare financial statements between companies or between years for the same company. So we have horizontal trend analysis and vertical analysis. So class. Pag horizontal, ganito lang yan, para at least uh, may, may tip ka na agad pag, uh, when, when you're approaching or attacking this type of problems. No? So, imagine mo lang, pag horizontal, paano ba yung line? Diba? Pag horizontal, ganyan yung line. No? I hope nakikita niyo ako. No? Ay, ganyan. And then pag vertical, pag ganito. O, so, pag tanda, tandaan mo lang, pag horizontal, you are comparing two years. No? So, uh, if you have 2020, 2020 and 2019 results, you are comparing the increase and decrease. While if it's a vertical, you are getting the percentage. No? So, parang ganito. Um, you have the sales. Sales, of course, in an income statement, that's your 100%. Because you deduct the other income statement elements in order for you to arrive to your net income. So, your sales is 100%. Eh, paano pag balance sheet naman? Pag balance sheet, of course, your total assets will be your 100%. And then your total liabilities and equities is another 100%. Kasi ngayon yung uh, basic accounting equation mo, no? So ngayon, nag-i-imagine ka, okay lang yan kung naguguluhan ka. But later on, sabi nga natin, we'll uh, illustrate it by uh, solving a discussion problem. So... Para lang at least may idea ka na, no? Horizontal analysis. So, horizontal analysis or the pesos and percentage changes on statements. The financial statements are placed side by side. Two types of comparisons can then be made. So, we have trend percentage, 
percentages restate a time series of financial data in terms of a base year, particularly when plotted against time. This approach allows the analyst to quickly gauge the rate and direction of changes. And letter B, the difference. Ito na yung sinasabi ko, no? So, uh, you, you're comparing two periods, eh, no? So, you have to get the difference, no? Later on, we'll also discuss this, so... The difference, increase or decrease between two statements can be shown in separate columns in both peso and percentage forms. Showing changes in peso form, form helps to zero in on key factors that have materially affected profitability or financial position. Parang ganito yung class. Um, say you are analyzing your cash, uh, yung cash balance mo na lang. <clears throat> so you have cash amount, cash balances in 2019 and 2020. Of course, ang gusto mo makita, bakit tumaas to ng, sabi natin, 5 million pesos? Why why did it increase by 5 million? No? So imagine, ha, cash balance mo in 2019, and then in 2020, nag-increase daw by 5 million. Siyempre, uh, happy ka, no? Dahil nag-increase yung cash balance mo, pero you have to understand what's driving the increase, no? And that... This horizontal analysis actually is a tool for you to analyze those types of uh, uh, movement. No? Kasi nga naman, as an accountant, while uh, the management is happy that you have uh, this load of cash in, in, your, in your bank account or um, in your uh, lockbox, of course, as an accountant, we have to make sure that management is well informed. No? Where, this, uh, where did it come from? No? So later on, we'll, we'll uh, cover more of that. Showing changes in peso form helps to zero in on key factors that have materially affected profitability or financial position. Of course, class, um, in, in financial statement analysis and in everything else, no? Kasi sa undergrad, um, especially, kailangan mo talaga identify lahat, no? But in, in real life, of course, there's materiality. No? Uh, for example, no, in Xerox, it's a multi, multi-billion dollar company. Of course, uh, 10,000 USD might not be material no, for Xerox entity as a whole. No? So imagine, uh, as an accountant, ako ba, I will, uh, will I dwell much time in analyzing that 10,000 USD if it's a million dollar uh, company. So yun na, case to case. Kaya nga meron tayong tinatawag na professional judgment. No? So, uh, ito lang din, no? side, uh, parang side discussion lang. No? So professional judgment, basically, that's your ability to diagnose and to solve. So that uh, separate us professionals from the other occupations. No? Kasi, uh, uh, like, like for example, no, uh, as an accountant, hindi naman tayo basta umalis ng undergrad, undergrad and accountant ka na. So, uh, of course, you have to pass a very tedious uh, CPA licensure exam. And uh, aside, uh, apart from that, you have to complete trainings. No? And then there's continuous professional development. So, yun nga. No? Parang ang sinasabi ko lang is, um, there's an there's always an element of professional judgment. No? So you have to, uh, you can't exercise or practice professional judgment without undergoing a series of trainings and experience. Na rin, no? So showing changes in percentage form helps to gain a feel of how unus unusual the changes might be. Parang ganto lang yan, class. Yung 5 million ba na yun? In peso amount, it's huge, no? 5 million, no? Pero in, in percentage terms, is it material pa rin ba? What's material? So sabi nga natin, that's case-to-case -case basis. And um, you have to be uh, experienced enough to determine to, to, to determine that, no? Especially uh, in in huge companies, naman there's this threshold na tinatawag, no? So hindi ka naman talaga uh, magde-decide out of the blue, no? So minsan there's there's always ma matrices na uh, where you can uh, base your decision from, no? So itong sinasabi lang naman dito is um, 
kung makikita mo kasi siya in percentage form, para bang um, you get a feel agad kung is it usual ba or or not. Oh, so, yung 5 million, no? it's huge amount. Pero, nung tinignan natin yung percentage, aba, it's 1% increase lang naman pala. So, ito pala talagang company natin, it's cash heavy. So, meaning, uh, they, I mean, they they have huge amount of cash balances in in their uh, in their accounts. Kaya pala yung 5 million, though it's 5 million, it's a lot of money, a 1% increase lang pala. So, imagine class, no? Uh, with one percent increase, that can be. Uh, I mean, we can we can we can conclude that it's just within the threshold, no? So you know, things like that, and of course, we can't really tell na it's within the threshold without looking at the other comparative statements. So, so sabi natin one percent siya, twenty nineteen versus twenty twenty, and naman yung twenty eighteen versus twenty nineteen. Is it also within the same level? So you. Yan yung mga tinitignan natin dyan. Now, pag-usapan natin yung vertical analysis. Common size statements or vertical analysis is one that shows each item as a percentage of a total. Ayan na. Rather than in peso form. These kinds of statements make it much easier to compare firms of different sizes and to track balance sheet and income statement relationships within a company over time as its size changes. So when preparing common size statements for the balance sheet, ito na class, eh? the various items on the balance sheets are typically stated as percentages of total assets. O yun nga. Kasi nga, uh, syempre meron ka accounting equation, no? asset is equal to liabilities plus equity. And you, you are analyzing say for example your your total assets then your total assets would be the hundred percent and then from there you allocate mo na uh, by allocating meaning ilang percent yung cash ng total sales na no? ilang percent yung ar mo ng of the of total assets na no? total sales b when applying common size techniques to the income statement all items on the income statement are usually stated as a percentage of total sales pesos. So, parang ano naman tayo, no? uh, for the obvious reason that your your gross sales or net sales will be the base. No? So, imagine mo lang, you have your um, your sales, your cost of sales, your gross profit, operating expenses, the operating income, the interest and the expense, and then your net income. No? So, of course, in vertical analysis, you have to distribute percentages no with your sales being the baseline so therefore your sales will be 100 percent annoying no hindi ko nakikita yung mukha ko kung i mean kung nakikita nyo ba ako kasi pag nagpe-present ako wala na ako visibility doon sa chat box and uh, even doon sa platform ng google meet no so i hope you can um you can see me and you can hear me clear no so i'll proceed with ratio analysis Itong ratio analysis, uh, there are different types of ratios, no? So, um, financial ratios. So, we have activity ratios, ratios that measure the liquidity of specific assets and efficiency in managing assets. Now, class, um, there will be a number of ratios that we need to be familiar of, no? So, uh, it, at imagine uh, in activity ratios pa lang, there are a number of uh, ratios here no but in 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 reality class uh while in undergrad talaga you have to to memorize all of this you know? but later on i'll give you technique on how to uh to approach this no in such a way that while you, it's true that you have to memorize it pero ano pa yung mga key items that you have to look into no para at least mas madali no like uh, for example ito sige tingnan natin to AR turnover so AR turnover sabi net credit sales over average AR pansinin mo class now if it's a turnover ang ang numerator mo will always be your sales if it's a turnover ang numerator mo will always be 
uh, an income statement account no so tingnan mo to ano bang ano bang income statement na kaparehas ng AR so of course pag nag-increase ang AR mo mag-increase ang sales mo no so, para mali yan pag nag-increase ang sales mo and it's uh, sales on credit ergo pag increase ang total AR mo kaya kung napansin mo if it's an AR turnover your numerator will be credit sales and ang kapartner palagi na denominator is average kung ano yung hinihingi yung turnover. turnover. So in this case, average AR. Sige. Isa pa, sample natin tong finished goods inventory turnover. Finished goods inventory turnover, anong kapartner niya? Of course, your cost of goods sold. No? Kasi nga, uh, kung uh, part na siya ng finished goods, ito na yung binibenta natin. No? So therefore, yung kapartner niya is cost of goods sold. And then, pansinin mo yung ilalim, <laughs> ilalim mo, yung denominator, it's average finished goods inventory. So, of course, inventory turnover. Ito naman yung sa mga, uh, if it's a uh, merchandising, but it's the same. If it's work in process, uh, of course, alam mo na na ang kapartner niyan is cost of goods manufactured. If it's raw materials, it eh, yung raw materials used naman. No? Okay. If it's AP turnover, pansinin, of course, if it's accounts payable, ang kapartner niyan is credit purchases. Take note class, ha? it's credit purchases. Kasi uh, in, in, in same case with sales, there will be cash sales and credit sales. And since we're talking about AR turnover, it should be net, net credit sales. No, So, if we're talking about AP, so it goes without saying that it should be net credit purchases. So yun na, at least meron ka na agad uh, uh, technique, no? Pag turnover pala, ang, denominate, ang numerator mo will be an element of income statement, yung pinaka-partner nung hinihingin turnover. O isa pa, para at least mas, uh, mas ma-appreciate mo, AR turnover, di ba? Sabi natin, AR turnover, Pag nakita mo yung turnover, isipin mo na agad, ano ba yung partner na income statement ni AR? So agad, makikita, may isip mo na, kasi nga AR to, so dapat sales. Pero hindi lang basta sales, it should be credit sales, na? or sales on account. And then, yung denominator mo will always the average of kung ano yung hinihinging turnover. No? So if, ang isa pang, isa pang tip, is if it's uh, if it's a balance sheet compared with an income statement it's always expressed in average no so yun lang at least para meron ka na agad technique no okay so solvency ratios are ratios that measure the ability of the firm to pay its long term financing and, and and the extent of firm's financing um parang ganito lang yung class diba uh, napag-usapan natin before uh, we can be we can source out financing either outside yun yung mga creditors or inside yung mga uh, share in, in the forms of uh, shares no, or yung equity so ito naman insolvency ratio basically uh, we're dealing with ilang percent ba yung f being financed with internal so meaning equity and ilang percent ba yung being financed with outside creditors or meaning your debt ratio so in this case we have debt ratio so total liabilities over total assets and then equity ratio your total equity over total assets and so right now we're, we're just dealing with with formula no it doesn't make sense but later on when we deal with the problem and then we apply all this formula um I mean, it it will it will all make sense. Para at least mas ma 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 feel natin, mas ma appreciate natin. Ano ba yung reason why we're uh, calculating these different uh, financial ratios? No, in fact, uh, in in our solution later on, we'll also give you uh, highlight no or uh, brief interpretation of those uh, ratio analysis. No, so. 
Next, we have profitability ratios. These are the ratios that measure the overall performance of the firm. So we have GPR or gross profit ratio. Pero ito naman kasi, uh, even, even before, even prior to your FS analysis, eh, alam mo na yung formula ng gross profit ratio. No? So it's gross profit divided by the net sales. Return on sales or profit margin ratio, of course, your net income over net sales. And then, uh, ito, siguro, ito, ito kasi bago, earnings per share. So you have net income less preferred dividends divided by average ordinary shares outstanding. Now, class, uh, if it's average ordinary shares outstanding, again, you have to get the beginning plus the uh, ending balance divided by two. It's always average you know, when it's paired with another uh, income statement account. Okay. So we also have the book value per share. It's total shareholders equity divided by average ordinary shares outstanding. So here, there's a note. Operating income is synonymous to EBIT. EBIT is your earnings before income in before interest and tax. Okay. Then we have the market test ratios. These ratios are concerned with the return on investment for shareholders and the relationship between the return and the value of an investment in company shares. Now, basically, class, um, market test ratio tells us uh, yung profitability and viability of our shares. No? So ito yung palaging tinitignan in, in terms of stock market. No? So ito yung uh, signal, it, it signals you whether the, the company performs well or not. No? So we have the price earnings ratio. It's the market price divided by the earnings per share. And the, earlier on, we've discussed how to compute the earnings per share. No? Then the dividend yield ratio, it's dividends per share divided by market price. Parang check dito, how much do you earn in terms of dividends so compared to the market price. Then we have the earnings yield ratio. It's earnings per share divided by the market price. No? Now, class, siguro ang, ang, ang question ngayon is, uh, do we have to memorize all these ratios? Well, the answer is yes. Pero nga, just like I said, I'll give you tips and hints on how to memorize it quicker no, than just uh, uh, putting it all in, 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 in the mind. No? And then also another tip is to write it down every time you solve a, a problem. No? Pero yun naman palagi yung practice natin. Eh? Uh, even, even, when, um, present, even when I'm presenting to you uh, solutions, no? kung napansin mo, palagi sinusulat ko lahat ng given, and then followed by writing down the, the formula. Kasi um, naalala ko nga yung, yung prof ko from the undergrad. Sabi niya, pag daw sinusulat mo, 20% of what you're writing retains in, in, your, in your brain. So imagine, no? nagsulat ka lang, 20% daw ng sinusulat mo, nare-retain na agad. Sa so doon, 80% na lang yung kailangan mo talagang i-focus. No? So at least... Um, there's already a retention and there's already a piece of uh, of the of the topic that's being retained in, in your in your mind no? so ayan na nga. so with that let's go to discussion problem 1 so discussion problem 1 class while there's multiple choice requirements 1 and 2 ang gusto kong approach is kompletuhin natin yung buong uh, exercise. No? So like for example, uh, requirement one, instead of just looking out uh, what's, what's the correct answer between these four um, selections, let's try to complete the full horizontal analysis of Piolo's balance sheet for 2021. And for number two, Let's also complete vertical analysis of Piolo's balance sheet for 2021. And not only that, let's also do the income statement. No? So para at least uh, at this stage, eh, magkaroon tayo ng full picture on how to do horizontal analysis and vertical analysis. Uh, aside from uh, 
the ratio analysis, I think financial statement analysis is fairly straightforward. No? So, hindi siya masyadong uh, tedious compared to the other other topics in financial market or in financial management. No? So, parang ano to, chicken feed lang sa inyo. No? So, wala masyadong uh, brain cells na gagana. No? So, lalo na kung vertical and horizontal analysis lang. No? Uh, isa pang tip, while today we'll be completing the full exercise, eh, in terms of um, doing your, say, your exams or your quizzes, eh, you don't have to really do the complete analysis naman. No? So, of course, magdwell ka lang dun sa, sa question. Kaya nga palagi di ba ang approach natin, read the requirements first. Kasi nga, baka mamaya ang haba ng problem, eh, ito lang naman pala yung hinihingi sa'yo. No? So, you don't want to lose so much time in doing your analysis and yet, ang hinihingi lang pala sa'yo ay eh, cash balance or AR balance. No? But today, the approach that we'll be doing is we'll complete the full uh, exercise ha, just for illustration and discussion purposes. So, take note of that. We're not, we're not deviating from the common approach. No? So, di ba, common approach natin is read the requirements first before we read the problem. No? Okay. Uh, it's just a reminder. No? So, let's have discussion problem one. Uh, and then, let's just move to my Excel file. So, let's have Piolo Corporation. So, so, Piolo Corporation reported the following figures. So, you have your balance sheet and your income statement. Um, what I did here is uh, instead of uh, focusing on the, on the text side, no? so what I did is I, I wrote down all the numbers here. No? So, parang ganito. Binild ko lang yung income statement in such a way that um, it will also cater with the other ratio formulas below. No? So, you have your sales. 2021 daw. Eh, no? 2021, 20,941. Then, Uh, yeah, purple tie. You have your cost of sales. Baka malito ka, buwing ko na to. Cost of sales of 7,055. So, of course, you, you get your gross profit of 13,886. Less your operating expenses of 7,065. You'll get now your operating income before interest and tax or your EBIT. Okay, ko rito para hindi nakakalip to. Your EBIT. Earnings before interest and tax. Then, uh, you'll have your interest expense of 210. Then, you'll get income before tax of 6,611. Of course, there's the income tax of 2,563. Then you'll get your net income of 4,048. So, pares pa lang. Pares din naman. Binild ko lang siya in such a way that it will also cater for the other uh, ratios formula below. No? So, later on, we'll, we'll go to that. Okay. So, next, build mo naman na, i-build naman natin yung balance sheet. So, you have your assets. Of course, cash and cash equivalents. Wala pa tayong ginagawa, pinaplat ko pa lang. 2,450 and then 2,094. So, binibuild pa lang natin. There. 1,813 and 1,611. Inventory, 1,324 and 1,060. And then... Prepaid expenses, 1,709 and 2,120. Then ito, class, pansin mo, nakalagay other, cur other assets. No? Simply, I just put in fixed asset. Kasi nga, later on, we'll have uh, financial ratios no, that will require fixed assets. So, so let's just assume that all these uh, other assets here refers to uh, refer to fixed assets, no? So, assumption natin yan, ha? Okay. So, that's 
18,500 and 15,737. So, okay na tayo dyan. Then, meron na tayong total assets of 25,796 and 22,622. Okay. So, now we go to the liabilities and equity. Of course, nakalagay dito, uh, total current liabilities. Now, for the purposes of discussion, let's assume that this total current liabilities refer to accounts payable. Okay? So we have 7,230 and 8,467. Then we have long-term liabilities. Long-term liabilities. So 4,798 and 3,792. And then you have your common stock. Baka mamaya magtanong pa kayo sa akin ano yung CS. Common stock. And then retained earnings. Hmm. Okay, so 6,568 and 4,363. O class, wala pa tayong ginagawa analysis. Ha? Pinaplot pa lang natin yung numbers. No? Para lang masundan kung paano, na, paano yung ginagawa ko. Then, 7,200 and 6,000. Then, you have your total liabilities and equity of 25,796 and 22,622. Okay. So, kompleto na yung comparative kompleto na yung comparative Statement, financial statements natin. Ayan. Now, let's proceed with requirement number one on vertical analysis. Pansinin mo na, class. In vertical analysis, sabi natin, di ba? Ang vert, uh, vertical line is like this, no? Oh, tama, straight line. No? So, pag vertical, kinukuha lang naman natin yung 100%. If it's an income statement, your 100% will be your sales. No? So, I put in 100% sa sales. Ngayon, isa-isa na natin yung percentage of the other elements. No? Parang ganito, um, ilang percent ang net income mo ng, uh, out of sales. No? So, it's net income, 4,048 divided by 20,941. So, that's 19%. Okay? So, another question, no? So, for example, ang question sa atin is how much uh, in, in percentage terms, may nag ba? In, in percentage terms, no? How much is your seven, um, how much is your operating expenses out of your total sales? No? It's 34%. So, that's 7,065 divided by 20,941. O class, uh, ang vertical analysis kasi it's just really allocating no? percentages to the other uh, income statement accounts. No? So, kinukuha mo kung 100% ang sales mo, ilang percent yung other uh, other income statement elements. No? Parang ganito, imagine uh, out of your total sales of 20,941, in eh 19% lang ba pala ang na pumasok sa atin as net income. So as as an accountant, as a financial manager, ba I need to analyze. Ano ba yung mga nag-drive? Bakit 19% lang ang income ko, no? So imagine for the whole of 2021, nag-overtime ka. Um yung yung workforce mo they 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 work tremendous number of hours just to hit their quota and yet 19% lang yung naging result ng operations natin for the whole year no so we have to analyze no aside from um knowing how to derive these numbers ang uh, really the importance of uh, all this financial statement analysis approach is to understand what drive those uh, figures no parang ganto no so kung ako mag analyze nito uh, siguro titignan ko agad dito is operating expenses 
kasi um, operating expenses usually dito yung pwede natin makontrol no uh, silipin ko siguro uh, meron bang excessive um, overtime check ko siguro yung process natin meron ba pwede tayong eliminate by elimination ang sinasabi natin dito is hindi yung tao ha yung process no so we can improve our process kaya nga di ba meron tayong tinatawag na lean management so we take away all the non value adding activities in such so that um, we'll be able to uh, efficiently uh, operate the uh, the firm no kasi ayaw natin yung marami mga non value adding no so kaya and then by doing so, siguro in the long run, eh, baka bumaba tong operating expenses natin. Yun, ganun, ganun mga type of uh, of uh, questions no? or or reasoning no? para at least ma-identify natin what drove 19% lang. No? Kasi syempre 19%, bakit ganun? Eh, ginawa ko naman lahat. No? Parang ganun. Eh? Of course, cost of sales, marami bang reject, uh, Marami bang delay in, in the production? Bakit 34% to? Meron ba tayong pwede pang, uh, pwede pang gawin para mas mapababa to? Can we source out what, uh, different suppliers that can give same level of quality at the, at a lower price? Yung mga ganun, no? So parang, uh, well, the intention is of course, gusto mo mas malaki net income. Sino bang in debt, no? So yun, yung, yun lang naman yung gusto ko i-point out, no? So, like I said, while it's true, it's good to to know how to derive these numbers. What's more important is, uh, of course, kailangan alam natin interpret yung number, no? Kasi, uh, etong imagine, no? Pwede, pwede naman palang gawin ni Excel file to, no? Uh, if this can be performed uh, in Excel file, therefore, a robot to, or a uh, uh, an AI can can easily do this job for the company, and yet uh, accountants and financial managers are there to interpret these numbers, no? In order for us to give the management the information for them to uh, better decide, no? Uh, and and forecast uh, uh, future um, transactions. Okay, so that's vertical analysis, no? In in, in well in this problem. We can only do for 2021 for obvious reason that we don't have the numbers for 2020. But in my uh, recording, uh, the ones that I've already provided you the materials with, uh, there will be two sets of years there. No? So like I said, it, it will be uh, good to have two separate uh, set of materials. No? Okay, so we go now to the balance sheet. So, balance sheet, of course, sabi natin, uh, total assets represent 100%, no? and total liabilities and equity also 100%. No? If your total assets is 100%, so all, you, all we have to do is to get the percentage contribution of each of this element. No? So, parang cash and cash equivalents, ilang percent niyan out of total assets. So, that's 9.5% for 2021. Paano yun? 2,450 divided by 25,796. So that's 9.5%. And 9.3% for 2020. Paano yun? 2,094 divided by 22,622. O class ha, isa pang tip. Uh, palagi ko sinasabi, uh, ayusin yung, yung pagsulat whenever you're and whenever you're solving problems kasi um, there will be times na kakailanganin mo yung yung sagot mo dun sa first question no kasi pala eh it's a thread of questions no kaya yun pala ah, there's there 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 are confusions in terms of um providing your solutions in good form no basically uh, what I'm, I'm what I'm requesting you to do what I'm requiring you to do is just simply uh, put it in good form, put it in, in a clear manner so that uh, it will be easier to uh, to read your your solution. No? Parang ganito, simply, ito yung ginagawa natin. Kung, kung napansin mo kung, kung saan-saan ako nagsusulat yan, bawa, uh, solve ko nga itong uh, cash, uh, 
cash over total assets. Imagine kung sinulat ko dito, 2094 divided by 22622. Tama pa rin naman yung answer ko. That's 9.3%, no? Pero kung if it's all over the place, ang hirap tingnan yan, class, no? It, uh, I mean, as early as now, you have to practice to uh, present your uh, your calculation and your computi- computations in good form. Kaya, kasi nga, di ba, sabi natin, accounting is an art. Eh, pero yung iba naman sa inyo, ha, mas marami naman, uh, mas, how, how do I put this? No? Yung iba sa inyo, talagang nagtatake ng extra effort. No? Very colorful naman yung, yung slides, eh, yung templates nila. No? Again, Uh, it's really up to you. Of course, in 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 when you when you're in in practice na uh, hindi naman advisable na very colorful yung yung template. No, ito, atong ginagawa ko. No, this is really not advisable. Though my templates in 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 my work, um, they're all in in purple. Then, no, so mga ganyan, no, sure, I love purple. Pero like I said. Uh, It's case to case, no. If it's in practice, sure, it has it needs it has to appear professional, no. Eh, kung ano ba may pink ka na yan, meron ka pang gray or meron ka pang yellow, pink, orange, purple. Eh, you have to, I mean, you have to co- to uh, comply with the professional atmosphere, naman, no. So ngayon undergrad tayo, so okay lang yan, no. So um, whatever uh, pleases your your eyes, sure. Kung, kung purple yan, kung ano yung favorite color mo, yun yung medyo pleasing, ano? mas na, na-drive ka. So, uh, kung ano yung nag-work sa'yo, no? so okay yun. Yun, yun, yun lang yun naman yung, yung sinasabi ko. No? Para at least, uh, ma-practice ka na as early as now to uh, keep your uh, solutions tidy. No? Kasi ikaw rin naman yung makikinabang yan. No? So, imagine kung itong 9.26, kung saan-saan ko lang nilagay, babalikan ko sa... Ano nga ba tong 9.26? Tapos nakasulat lang ng ganyan, wala ka pa formula, no? So ang hirap balikan, no? So that's what I'm I'm just pointing out. No? So to those of you who reach out asking what's the requirement of I mean providing solution in good form. Ito lang naman 'yan, no? So okay lang 'yan. So okay. Sige, dami ko na namang Daldal. Kaya yung sinesend ko sa inyo na edited video, inaalis ko yung mga, yung mga daldal na ganito. Eh, no? Kasi I talk a lot. Eh. Sige. Uh, puntaan ngayon natin yung uh, liabilities side. Liabilities and equity portion. So sabi natin, total liabilities and equity would be your 100%. So uh, pa, pa, pag sinabi ko, oh, compute. The, for 2020, ilang percent ang long-term liabilities mo. So, that's 8,400, uh, sorry, long-term liabilities. That's 3,792 divided by 22,622 or 16.8%. No? So, ganun pa rin yung process. No? Tandaan lang, class, uh, in balance sheet, your total assets represents uh, 100% as well as your total liabilities and and equity. So imagine, no? Ang dami na namang kulay. So that's vertical analysis. Again, um, really, no, for for us, accountants and financial managers, it's, it's, it is expected of us to know how to calculate for this uh, vertical analysis, no? But really, the, mo- the more important thing is for us to know how to interpret these numbers, no? So parang ganito, no? Sabi dito, Uh, 71% daw ng total assets natin uh, goes to fixed assets. So meaning, we're heavily investing in fixed assets. Ano ba itong mga fixed assets? We have building, uh, your your equipment and machineries. No? So ano kaya, ano kaya yung possible na nature of business natin? No? Uh, 70, greater part. Eh, no? So se- se- more than 70% of our total assets are fix assets no so yun yun yung mga kailangan natin alamin no yun yung kailangan of course with the very limited information like this eh, hindi hindi pa nga sinabi yung nature ng company eh, we, we wouldn't know no pero in practice um, there will always be information more information available to you in order for you to uh, uh, to know no what what drove to this number So, okay. So, that's vertical analysis. Now, we go to horizontal analysis. 
O, paano pa yung horizontal? Ang horizontal natin is pag ganun, di ba? Line. Horizontal line. Pag horizontal line class, you're actually just comparing two comparative years, no? So, two comparative periods. So, in this case, we're comparing 2021 and 2020. Ngayon, uh, of course, uh, for the income statement, we cannot do horizontal analysis for obvious reason that um, 2021 are the only provided data. So, therefore, hindi tayo pwede makapag-compute ng increase decrease. So, puntahan ngayon natin tong balance sheet. O, parang ganito lang yung class. Tingnan mo to. Uh, yung sa increase-decrease, kinukuha mo lang yung naging difference. no Difference. No? So, 2,450 for 2021 less 2,094. Ah, may nag-increase na 356. O, ito class ha, masyado maliit yung number, 356. Pero in lang natin yung mga zeros. no So, it could be 356,000 or it could be 356 million. Ngayon, Uh, we're just dropping the zeros no, for the sake of uh, this, for discussion purposes for simplicity uh, sake na lang din. Uh, ngayon, kung nakita na natin yung increase, of course, kailangan natin ngayon ma ma maintindihan bakit nag-increase. No? So that represents 17%. Paano naman na-compute yung 17%? So increase or decrease, this one, divided by Uh, last year. So, yung last year ang ano natin, na, ang pinaka baseline. So, we can conclude na there's 17% increase or 356 pesos. Ganon. Ganon ang, ang approach pag horizontal analysis. Ang maganda rito, class, isang tingin pa lang, makikita mo na agad ano yung mga nag-increase, ano yung mga nag-decrease. And then, kung meron pang other data available, then we can, we can uh, base from it kung talagang within trend siya no but in this case there are only two years available you know so parang ganto uh ito tingnan mo uh, ang prepaid expenses natin bumaba decrease by 411 pesos or 19% ano kaya yung reason bakit uh, bumaba yung prepaid expenses so it could be uh, tapos na yung amortization So, kung bawa prepaid, uh, prepaid rent yan, could be that in, in 2021, nag-lapse na yung one year. No? So, things like that. Um, and then, in, in total assets naman, uh, makita mo dito, uh, it's 3,174 increase no? or equivalent to 14%. Pero ang pansinin natin is yung in, there's still an increase in fixed assets of 2,763%. Ano kaya yung pinurchase nating fixed assets in 2021? Uh, could it be additional uh, machineries? Could it be additional uh, uh, building? Nag-expand ba tayo? So, yun. So, that's equivalent to 18%. No? So, puntan natin yung liabilities and equity. It's, it's the same. Uh, yeah, let's analyze first yung accounts payable. Accounts payable natin in 2020 amounted to 8,467. Then in 2021, naging 7,230 na lang. So there's a decrease of 1,237 or 15%. Ngayon, i-analyze natin yan. Ano kaya yung mga possible reasons? No? So like I said, I'm just, um, I'm just assuming or just stating some possible reasons. No? But it could be different no? uh, depending on the on a more detailed analysis. No? Ano bang possible reason kung bakit nagdi-decrease ang accounts payable mo? Uh, it could be you have settled uh, your accounts payable at year end. No? Nagbayad ka na mas maaga kasi you, want, you wanted to take um, uh, discount. No? Parang ganun. So at least uh, para makakuha ka ng discount, you have to pay early. Parang ganun. No? Uh, ano pa? Possible na reason for accounts payable de decline. So meron ka nakita ng isang supplier um, which has, uh, supplies you with uh, materials or merchandise of the same quality pero lower price no so kaya pala kaya pala bumaba yung accounts payable natin so yun yun yung mga uh, possible reasons no uh, let's try to analyze naman to sabihin natin retained earnings no anyway uh, we in in our discussion on uh, 
stockholders' equity with touch retained earnings. Sabi natin, retained earnings uh, refers to your accumulated uh, earnings. No? So these are the accumulated profit and at the same time, uh, deducting your dividends. No? So sinasabi natin dito, there's an increase of 1,200. Paano nakuha yan? 7,200 less 6,000. So there's 1,200 or equivalent to 20% increase. So ano ba yung mga possible reasons bakit nag-increase ang retained earnings? Number one, uh, nag-increase yung uh, net income mo. Kasi di ba, sabi natin, the end of the accounting period, your net income is being close to your retained earnings. No? So there's element of retained earnings, uh, of, uh, of net income plus uh, or less the dividends. No? So yun, yun yung mga possible reasons. Of course, uh, like I said, I'm just stating possible reasons. So there, could, there could be different reasons depending on the uh, ano, more detailed analysis. No? So that's, uh, that's horizontal analysis. Okay. Ngayon, uh, tapos na tayo sa vertical and horizontal analysis, di ba? Puntahan ngayon natin yung requirement ng problem. Oh. Number one, actually, parang mas mabilis ko. Okay. Number one, horizontal analysis of Piolo's balance sheet for 2021 would report. Oh, so, Sakit lang, ang tinatang lang naman dito, horizontal analysis. Eh, pag horizontal analysis, alam mo na na uh, percentage increase or decrease yan. No? So, pignan natin agad yung selection ng percentage increase or decrease. Siyempre, letter C and letter D, hindi mo pwedeng sagot yan kasi ratio yan. No? Eh, letter A, pag sinasabi naman percentage of total assets, eh, alam mo na agad na vertical analysis yan. So, therefore, the correct answer, answer is letter B. 17% increase in cash. Ayun, 17% increase in cash. Na? Next, vertical analysis of Piolo's balance sheet for 2021 would report. Oh, vertical analysis naman. Pag vertical analysis, alam mo, percentage of total assets. Again, letter C, current ratio, and inventory turnover, hindi mo pwede maging choice yan. Kasi nga ratios, financial ratios yan. And letter D, again, this is uh, horizontal analysis. So therefore, correct answer is letter A, cash as 9.5% of total sales. Actually, that's the 9.5%. Okay, so let's now go to discussion problem number two. So in this discussion problem number two, actually, it's the same set of... Uh, uh, problems, same set of balance sheet and income statement, but this time, uh, we're being asked to compute for different financial ratios. No? So, it, number one, um, asset test ratio, two, inventory turnover, and then number three, days sales in receivables ratio, and then next is times interest earned ratio, earnings per share, and lastly, uh, the price earnings ratio. Now, while uh, we're being asked of few ratios lang, no, so financial ratios lang, uh, what we're going to do is we'll try to apply, we'll try to solve for all financial ratios no, para at least mas ma-appreciate natin yung concept. No? So let's do uh, problem number two. It's the same problem like I said, pero this time, isa-isay natin yung mga ratios. No? Okay. Oh, sige. Say say natin. Uh, as you can see, class. I'm gonna to. Okay. As you can see, class, in column V, uh, there's the interpretation, no? Uh, sige, samplean muna natin. Current ratio. So, ayun, sinulat ko, it's current asset divided by current liabilities. So, we will 
we can compute for 2021 and 2020 current ratio no so it's 1.0 for 2021 paano na compute ayun um your oops okay so that's your total current assets so pinulang natin yung current assets divided by current liabilities ayun that's the accounts payable no so that's 1.0 and then 0 0.8 for 2020. So sabi natin, it's the higher and the better. So more current assets are available to pay current obligations. No? Now class, ito pa. Uh, in, in doing ratio analysis and also horizontal and vertical analysis, um, for you to really get the benefit of this exercise, you have to compare it with the same industry no so parang parang ganto no say for example we are uh, the manufacturer of um sabihin na natin coca-cola tayo no so beverages no so kung kung coca-cola tayo we can compare our results with another beverage company sabihin natin Pepsi tama no magkaibang company no so yes so, meron tayong coca-cola Compare natin with Pepsi. Bakit, bakit natin kailangan gawin yun? No? So, at least, uh, if we're comparing it with another another company, our, our competitor, para lang mag natin how well or how bad we are performing against our competitor. Imagine, uh, dito sa example natin kanina. Oops, let's go. Sabi natin, uh, we only generated 19% net income in 2021. Siyempre, uh, in order for you to say whether this is good or bad, uh, compare mo with, with Pepsi company. So, ilang percent ba yung net income nila of their total sales? No? And if it's within the same level, uh, we can conclude na baka ito nga talaga yung trend within our industry. But however, if it's say... 50% sila. Uh, baka may mali sa operations natin. So we have to revisit that. And that's why uh, as financial accountants or accountants, uh, we have to really make sure that we know to interpret these numbers. No? Kasi kung numbers lang to, eh kaya-kaya gawin ng computer to. Mawawalan tayo ng trabaho. No? So it's, it's really how to interpret these numbers so that we'll be able to aid the management to decide. No? To have a... Uh, uh, better better uh, decision no? okay so ganun ganun yung class no para at least mas ma-appreciate natin yung yung ginagawa natin kasi tingnan mo puro tayo uh, number crunching daming numbers uh, pero kailangan ma-interpret natin no? so yun lang naman yung key message na no? okay sige oh, another another siguro another benefit of making sure that your uh, preparing your calculations in good form, like like in my case, no, I'm using Excel. Excel, eh, pwede ko na siyang ilink doon sa taas, no? Unlike kung nakasulat siya kung saan saan, eh, you're you're, you're go the, the 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 tendency is you're just going to repeat all the work, no? Parang ganon. So in in your case, while you're writing it down, in sabi natin in a piece of paper. Pero right now, I think you're also using Excel files, you know. Which is good, not this napa practice one na kasi, I mean, uh, gone are the days that we're, we're doing, uh, we're putting it all in columnar, columnar workbook. Sa tapos na yan, sa talagang latay computer based na. In fact, um, uh, in practice, there are a number of uh, accounting software, no? So, yun ngang, uh, uh, right now, the, the best would be the Oracle or yung SAP, no? So in, in, in Xerox, I'm using SAP. Anyway, yan na naman sa dami na naman side comments. Punta natin yung acid test ratio. So sabi natin, the higher the better, more current assets are able to pay current obligations. Pag sinabi kasi natin class na acid test ratio, these are, um, yes, true, uh, current assets siya, pero ito yung sinatawag natin quick assets. So meaning, these are, highly liquid assets, readily con convertible into cash. So, ano ba yung mga quick assets natin? So, that's your cash and cash equivalents and receivables divided by the total current liabilities. No? So, we have 0 0.6 and 0 
Sabi dyan, the higher the better, ha? Huh? So, imagine in, in this case, uh, hindi man lang tayo nag-1. So, meaning, we have less quick assets to finance or to pay for our current liabilities. No? We, this is not a good indicator. Okay, next we have AR turnover. Ito na yung sinasabi natin, ha? AR turnover. Uh, parang ganito lang yung class. Uh, yung pinag-usapan natin kanina, sabi natin, pag turnover, ang ipapartner natin dyan ay income statement account. Okay. E eh, dahil nga AR ang pinag-uusapan, accounts receivable, alam mo na agad na ang kapartner niyan is sales on account. In this case, hindi kasi na-mention ng problem kung ito bang sales natin is purely credit or purely cash. No? Um, in, in that case, uh, we'll assume that it's all net sales on credit or on account. No? So that's 12.2. Paano natin kinompute? That's 20,941 divided by the average receivable. No? Paano kinompute yung average receivable? 1,813 plus 1,611 divided by 2. So, to get the average. No? So, that's 12.2 uh, times. So, the higher the better, it's the number of times receivable is reinvested. No? So, meaning, uh, this is the number of times you get, remember yung, yung uh, cash conversion cycle that we've discussed during our uh, cash management uh, session, no? So, it's it's just telling us, no, the number of times where we able to collect the receivable and turn it and reinvest it in our in our cycle, no? So that's twelve point two times. Again, the higher the better. Next, we have the inventory turnover. Siguro para lang at least mas ma appreciate, no? Lagay ko lang po yung buo. Baka kasi ano niyo pa ako ni AR, no? Accounts receivable. Okay. And then we have the inventory turnover. Inventory turnover. So again, this is turnover. Ano nga yung pinag-uusapan natin na kapartner turnover. Kapartner ng inventory. And in this case, uh, hindi naman na-mention kung manufacturing siya or merchandising so let's assume it's a merchandising uh, firm no so therefore uh, the uh, numerator is your cost of sales divided by average inventory okay so that's 5.9 again paano ulit na compute so your cost of sales 7055 divided by the average inventory paano ulit na ko yung average inventory it's 1,324 plus, plus 1,060 divided by 2. Okay? So that's 5.9. Again, the higher the better. It's the number of times inventory is reinvested. No? Now, let's go to the day's AR. So meaning, ito lang naman yung gano katagal yung AR mo bago makulek. Simple ganun, no? So that's day's AR outstanding. So, it's 365 over your AR turnover. So, it's 29.8 days or simply 30 days. No? Oh, again, class, um, the numerator here is 365. But it really depends on the require, requirement of the problem. If the problem tells you to use 360 days, then by all means use 360 days. If the problem tells you to use 280 days, Let's use 280 days. No? Uh, in, in accounting problems naman, we're not being tested to know the number of days in a year. No? So simply use whatever information is provided in the problem. No? Yun lang naman yung gusto ko point out. So let's go to the day's inventory. Day's inventory, sabi natin, it's the number of days inventory is held as stock. So meaning, ito yung uh, kinikip natin sa warehouse. No? So... Baka meron, meron na miss out on the uh, inventory management process. No? So it's 365 divided by the inventory turnover or 61.7 days or simply 62 days. No? Uh, healthy ba yun? 
meaning you're keeping inventory for 62 days. And remember, if you're keeping inventory that long, there's also the element of cost involved, no? So there's the warehousing. Uh, so we not in rental. Imagine um, you're renting out space, no, for those stocks that you're keeping for 62 days, no? So again, uh, this is a way for us to revisit our processes. Kasi nga, if it's if we're keeping our inventory for 62 days, is it that too long? So uh, we have to check out what we're missing, no? Bakit ganun katagal? Bakit hindi agad na bebenta? Uh, there's the element of uh, sales force, marketing, marketing arrangements, and what else? No? Again, uh, in order for us to better to have a better view or better picture of what's happening within within the industry, then you, we have to compare it with the other entities, other companies within the same industry. Ito ang palagi tatandaan, class. Uh, parang, for example, no, we are Coca-Cola. And yet, you're comparing your results with a tobe tobacco manufacturer. So, meron ka siguro, ano ba mga sigarilyo? Ano ba sigarilyo ngayon? Ay, wala akong alam na sigarilyo. Winston or, or Marlboro. So you're a beverage company, you compare your results with a tobacco company, with, with Marlboro, your Coca-Cola, you're comparing your results with Marlboro. Hindi yun, it, it won't uh, give you, uh, an, it won't give you any result, no? Just to say. Kasi nga, hindi siya comparable. So you have to compare it within the same industry, okay? Sige. Let's proceed with the, the others, uh, other uh, ratios. So we have your total asset turnover. Oh, class, huh? T-O, it's turnover. So it's sales over total assets. No? So let's see the calculation. <clears throat> so 20,941 over 25,796. Then we have the debt ratio. It's total liabilities over total assets. Total liabilities, 7,230 plus 4,798 divided by the total assets of 25,796. Huh? Sige. Then there's the equity ratio and then debt equity ratio. Ito kasi, uh, more or less, it will tell you, no? how to approach the ratio, sabi nga, kasi it's debt ratio, so your numerator is your debt, total debt, no? or simply your total liabilities. If it's an equity ratio, so your numerator is total equity. Again, I'm sharing you tips and hints no? on how to memorize no? and, and be familiar with these types of, uh, of formula, of uh, ratios. No? Uh, kaya um, during my undergrad class, no? just to share with you, Ah, hindi ako nag-focus dito eh. Kasi ito, parang given eh. No? Alam mo lang yung partner. Pag turnover, alam mo yung ka-partner na account na from the income statement, okay ka na. Even dito sa debt ratio, it's given eh. No? Parang hindi ka mag-iisip. It's, it's piece of cake, no? parang ganun. Pero ito yung nag, dito ako nag-focus. Kasi uh, like times interest, eh, hindi naman palagi lumalabas yan. So you have to know your EBIT, no? Kasi imagine, no, kung at this stage you don't know how to compute for your earnings before interest and, and tax, eh, may problema. So you have to be familiar really with your uh, income statement no? so for you to uh, calculate times interest earned. No? So let's have times interest earned. No? Uh, it's EBIT. So sabi natin, earnings before income tax or your operating income, 6,821 divided by the two, divided by interest expense no so that's 210 so basically class uh, times interest earned is telling us no kasi diba interest expense ito yung uh, ito yung inutang natin to finance our our business no so ang ang pinapakita ng sa atin ng times interest earned is gaano ba karami yung binabayad nating interest out of our operating income no so sabi dito it's 32.5 times Okay. Next, basic earning power. So basic earning power, it's 0 0.3. 
it indicates the ability of the firm's assets to generate operating income. Again, the formula is EBIT or your operating income divided by average total assets. Gross profit ratio, ito, nakumpita natin ito kanina. No? So it's gross profit <clears throat> divided by your net sales. No? And then next, we have the return on sales. So, Punuin ko ito, baka mamaya malito. Return on sales. Your net income divided by net sales or 0 0.2. So it used to evaluate a company's operational efficiency. Then of course, you have your return on assets and return on equity. O sa pang tip, pag naman ang ratio is return, pansinin mo klas ha, kayo muna yung pumansin. Ayan. Pag ang ratio is return, the numerator is net income. With the exception of return on asset being operating income after tax. Pero pag sinabi mo, return on sales, it's net income over net sales. Return on net equity, it's net income over average total equity. Okay? So, at least may, may hint ka na agad, no? Okay, so let's do earnings per share. Earnings per share, it's net income less preferred dividends divided by average ordinary shares outstanding. Sige. Uh, ano ba yung sinasabi naman ng earnings per share? Basically, class, um, we're just getting how much of the net income goes to ordinary shares. No? So uh, in, the, in this case, meron tayong net income of how much? Uh, we have net income of 4,048. Eh, ilan ba yung ordinary shares natin? Sabi dito, we have ordinary shares of 2,500. So 2,500, uh, sorry, 4,000, 4,048 divided by 2,500. And now, since we're talking about ordinary shares outstanding dito, and since wala naman talagang naging uh, transaction, so we can assume that the 2,500 is already your average ordinary shares outstanding. No? It's 1.62. Okay? Then we have dividends per share. Again, since what, there's no mention about dividends here, then we cannot calculate for it, no? Also, dividend payout ratio. So, let's go to price earnings ratio. So, sabi, market price over EPS. Ano ba tong EPS? Again, this is earnings per share. Para lang hindi malito. EPS is earnings per share. So, there's, um, there's this market price here. No? So, sabi, Piolo stock has traded recently around 48 per share. So that's the market price. That's the trading price. So that's um, 48 divided by the earnings per share. Earnings per share is 1.62. No? So that's 29.6. Um, no? It shows what the market is willing to pay today for a stock based on its past or future earnings. No? Then, we have the dividend yield ratio. Kung meron sanang dividends per share, no? Pero there's no mention about dividends here, so we cannot calculate it. And finally, we have the earnings yield ratio. It's earnings per share divided by the market price, no? Or simply 1.62 divided by 48. Saan galing yung 48 class? Ayun, given siya dun sa problem. Now that we're, we are now complete in uh, solving all this ratio, let's try to answer problem discussion problem number two no so ito na pala kinopya ko na dito i think okay sige ito say say natin which statement best describes piolo's acid test ratio also like i said no we've calculated for all this ratio for the sake of discussion but in terms of i mean when you're uh dealing with this type of problems of course you just have to read the requirement no kasi Requirement 1 is asking you to do acid test ratio lang pala. And yet, kinumpleto mo lahat to, no? So, like I said, 
uh, read the requirement first. No? So in this case, ano daw yung tama? Acid test ratio. So na-compute natin 2021 and 2020. It's 0.6 for 2021 and 0.4 for 2020. Is it greater than 1? Sabi mo hindi. Is it equal to 1? Sabi natin hindi. Is it less than than less than less 1? Well, that's the answer. No? Kasi nga 0.6 and 0.4. No? So the answer is letter C. Next, tingnan naman natin ng inventory turnover. Oh, so ayun, inventory turnover. Is it 6? Well, the answer is 6 times. No? So that's 5.9 or 6 times. Next, days sales in receivables ratio. So days AR. Sabihin natin to days sales in receivable. So that's 365 over AR turnover. So ito class, syempre hindi mo ito makocompute without calculating your receivable turnover first. So uh, the answer is 30 days. No, So that's 30 days. Ayan. Next, which measure expresses Piolo's times interest earned ratio amounts rounded? Sige, tignan natin si times interest ratio. Okay, so EBIT divided by interest, sabi, um, rounded daw. So, natin. so that's 32 times. The answer is letter D. Okay, we're down to the, our last two questions. The company has 2,500 shares of common stock outstanding. What is Piolo's earnings per share? So, earnings per share, punta tayo dito. It's 1.62. There, no? So, letter A. Paano ulit kinompute yun? It's the net income of 4,048 divided by 2,500. 2,500 being the average ordinary shares outstanding. Again, class, kaya sinabing average ordinary shares outstanding, you have to get the uh, beginning outstanding share and ending outstanding share and then divided by 2. But in this case, uh, it's given, no? It's 2,500 shares. So it's 1.62. Uh, and finally, compute for the price earnings ratio. Price earnings ratio, sabi natin, it's market price divided by EPS. Eh, dahil nga, uh, you're now practicing to solve in good form, eh, hindi mo na kailangan ulitin pa to calculate the earnings per share. No? So kukunin mo lang doon sa previous calculation natin. So therefore, it's 48 divided by 1.62 or... 30. Okay, so the answer is letter B. Okay. Actually, that ends our discussion for the financial statement analysis. So like I said, if you have any questions, you can shoot me an email or you can send me a chat. This has been your instructor, Mark Gibson. Thank you for learning with us. See you in our next discussion. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya!